to get things rolling, the team decamped to a much-loved location. If you're going to blow something up and you need more than just a few pounds of explosives to do it, generally the neighbors don't like it. And that's why we've come to one of our favorite places to blow large things up, I own California. That seems about right. Our plan today is pretty straightforward. We're going to be detonating two mail trucks. Why two mail trucks? Well, one obviously will be full of wet cement, but their first blast will be empty. Yes! The Mythbusters Postal Service, the skeletal bird with dynamite in his talons. <laughs> Why are we detonating an empty mail truck? Well, that's because we can't know if MacGyver's actions had any effect on the blast unless we have something to compare it to. That's our control. For set dressing, the cop car that MacGyver hides behind is dropped into place. But the key to this myth is the mail truck's explosive cargo. By looking at the clip, we've determined that they used about 84 pounds of dynamite. Now, this right here may look a little bit more festive, but this is actually what 84 pounds of dynamite looks like. To quantify and compare the damage between the control and the concrete blasts, they'll measure two parameters. First, the shrapnel. We want to know how dangerous the shrapnel might be, so we are implementing shrapnel catchers. We have cut out a ton of plywood dudes that we are going to place on a 30-foot radius between us and the blast so that we can see if chunks of metal fly off Will it kill someone standing that far away? Let's mull it up! You know, while it's universally agreed that MacGyver brought ingenuity and cool problem solving to network television, it's not often discussed what he's done for the mullet. Business in the front, party in the rear. The second parameter is the pressure wave. We'll be gathering precise data on the strength of our blast using one of these. This is a pressure transducer. Our blast obviously will put out a tremendous amount of energy, most of it in the form of a blast pressure wave. That wave will meet our pressure transducer. It'll exert a little mechanical energy on a tiny crystal inside the transducer called a piezo. When we hook it up to a computer, it gives us exactly how strong the blast pressure wave was where that pressure transducer was placed. Having all three of these data points for both blasts ought to give us a really good picture to see if MacGyver's cement made a difference between the control and the cement blast. Mr. Heineman, you ready? OK, arming and ready. This is MacGyver control empty postal van, 84 pounds of TNT in three, two, one. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> that, I think there's still some stuff flying through the air. Yeah. Nobody go outside yet. Nope. What goes up comes down. Yep. You've got hail. A hail of metal shrapnel. Now oh, look, the eagle has landed. And plywood shrapnel catchers. That's got to hurt. <laughs> it's pure carnage for our shrapnel catchers. Legs and hands and mullets everywhere. The blast was significantly more powerful than expected. At 30 feet, the shrapnel damage was clearly catastrophic. But what about the pressure sensors? Oh. <laughs> Whoops. It looks like all three of the sensors we had out here are totally busted. With the cables for the pressure transducers shredded, even at 250 feet, they have no control data. And the next step will take some figuring out. <laughs> 